Hello everyone, this is Mar Haddad here. So I have decided to do a new YouTube uh, video and in this video I'm going to show you how we can configure BGP on router OS version 7. So uh, this topic is not very clear for a lot of people, especially that router OS version 7 has not been long time ago used uh, by uh, Microtech. Uh, so they just put the router OS version 7 a couple of months uh, back. So uh, in uh, this uh, video I'm going to show you how we can form the BGP peers, how we can make uh, the announcement of uh, the prefixes that we want to announce and also I'm going to show you how we can play with the filters so uh, we can do some filtering on BGP. So all of those things are going to be covered in uh, this video. Of course uh, this video is a little bit uh, a difficult one to be honest because it's more to be talking about BGP so I assume that you already have some knowledge about BGP if you don't have then I will advise you to take uh, the course that uh, you see uh, now uh, here and I also put it on the description so please enroll in uh, this course so you can learn about BGP of course this course is based on router as version 6 but uh, the topics and uh, the explanation of the BGP is the same the only thing is that uh, the way you configure it on the router as version 6 7 is a bit different than what you do on router as version 6 but the discourse will speak uh, deeply about uh, bgp about how this protocol works how it thinks so you can uh, do the configuration later so let's go directly to see what is the scenario of this lab so that is my scenario i do have two isps connected to my router so let's say that it is the router which is in my office and those are the two isps and I have already the IPs uh, connected to each other. So what I need to do is to form BGP peer with this ISP. And I want to form BGP peer with this ISP. Then I have to announce my internal network, uh, which is normally here I'm using private IP addresses, but normally here it should be public IP address because this is lab. I'm just using now private IP addresses. So let's say that it is a public IP address. I need to announce it to the uh, BGP peers that I have. So that means anyone on the internet who want to reach to this IP, he can come uh, to me from one of these ISPs. All right, very good. So that's uh, what we need to do now. Um, the ISPs over here, ISP1 and ISP2, uh, they are connected to the internet. So I assume that there is uh, this IP, which is 3.3.3.3, which is an IP on the internet, which is a prefix on uh, the internet. So the, uh, my router to be able to reach to this network, I can go from ISP1 or from ISP2. So the idea is that I want that from my router, which is router 1, I want to go to this prefix. Uh, from the, uh, we'll see it later, but I think it's going to be on ISP2. So I want that all the traffic to 3.3.3.3 to go from ISP2. And also, I want that the traffic which come back, it doesn't come from the uh, ISP1. So I don't want that. I want it also to come back from ISP2 to me. So that's what we need to do. And we have to uh, work with the filters and we have to play with the attributes on BGP. Then in this case, anyone in my network want to go to that uh, particular IP or this network 3.3.3.0 slash 24, then it has to go from ISP2 and then it has to come to, to come from ISP2. So I need to make the configuration the way it has to go and the way it has to come back. So this is what we need to do in uh, this lab. Let's directly start first to make the BGP peers between all the routers. And uh, then uh, of course there is, we have to think that also those ISPs they have as well uh, connectivity because the ISPs are all connected to each other. So we assume also that the ISP1 and ISP2 have connectivity. So also we make BGP peers between those two ISPs. So let's start directly with our work. So before I start uh, the work, I just want to show you how I have um, uh, the uh, topology. So this is on GNS3. As you can see, I'm using the latest version 7.5, which is on router OS. So this is uh, my router one, this is ISP1, this is ISP2, and this is my computer. And this is actually this is the PC, which I want to do the test on. And this is my computer connected to here. So I have connectivity to all those uh, routers using Ramon. And uh, I can go to make configuration on all of those routers uh, using Romon, um, so I can reach them on Winbox. And between those two ISPs, there is a link. Now, the 3.3.3.3 is a bridge interface that I created over here, and I created over here, just a virtual interface, Yeah, assuming that it is a network on the Internet. Now, let's go to Router 1 and start uh, doing the BGP peers with the, the ISP1 and the ISP2. So let's do that directly. We go to the Router 1. So this is router one. You can see I already have the IPs 
you can look at the uh, the graph you can see that uh, this those are the ips that is going to the uh, pc that is going to isp2 that is going to isp3 so when you say one two that's isp2 and you see one three that is isp3 now how to make the bgp on the router as version 7. now we have two things to do here. We have to do the BGP peer and we have to announce our prefix to the ISP, which is 172.16.0.0. So we have to go to routing BGP and the first thing we have to create the template. So let's assume that my autonomous system, which is uh, uh, my network, it is, uh, let's just make it simple. My autonomous system is one. You can put here the router ID if you want. I'm not going to do that. Just let's make it very simple. So that is the autonomous system, which is autonomous system one. Now we need to create the connections. So that is the peer. I have to say it is uh, two ISP two. I use the template, which is the one I just uh, configured now. Remote autonomous system 192.168.12.2. That is the IP of the uh, ISP one. And then remote autonomous system. It is two. That is the uh, autonomous system of, of uh, ISP two. And then I say, it is an eBGP, it's external BGP. So this is uh, done for uh, the uh, to ISP2. I will make a copy. I'll make another one to ISP3. So I'm going to use also the default. And uh, this is uh, 192.168.13.3. And this has uh, the remote autonomous system three. So this is ISP three has remote autonomous system three and apply. So those are the two sites that uh, I have uh, to make. Now I need to advertise my network, which is 172.16.0.0. How to do that on authorized version seven? All you need to do, you have to go to IP firewall and you create an address list here. You name it whatever you want. So I will name it my network. 172.16.0.0 slash 24. Very good. So that is done now. Now I will go back to the peers and I will have to um, here advertise this network, which is my network on the out as output network. So I advertise it here and I have to do that on the same on ISP3, my network. All right, so both uh, ISPs knows about how to reach to my network, which is 172.16.0.0. So this is all done on router one. Let's go now to router, which is the ISP router, ISP one. So we go to ISP one. We are on the already BGP. We just have to change the autonomous system. We said it's two. And this router needs to do uh, peers uh, with the router one and with the ISP three. All right, because we have to think that those two ISPs are connected to each other. So let's do that. So we go here and we say to router one, template default. Router one has an IP of 192.168.12.1. The remote autonomous system, it is one, and here it is eBGP. Okay, so it is done. And now I have to, now if you look to the session, you can see that the session has already uh, started. You can see here the uptime. So that is already peer with the uh, router one. That means if I go to IP routes, I should see the network. Here we go. 172.16.0.0. This is what they advertised uh, the prefix on router one to us. Very good. Now let's do one with the two ISP3. Also, I will make the default template. And uh, ISP3, um, actually, we can look at the IP of uh, we, uh, that I made between ISP2 and ISP3. It is 10.10.10.3, which is ISP3. Okay, so let's do that. We go here, 10.10.10.3. And then uh, the ISP3 is uh, remote autonomous system 3, and then also it's eBGP. Very good. Now, the other thing that I want to do is to advertise the network, which is 3.3.3.3. You can see this network uh, that I normally, what I did, I just make a bridge interface and I put inside this bridge interface an IP address of 3.3.3.3, just a network to be able to reach it. So the same thing that we have done, I have to go here to IP firewall 
and then uh, address list I will call it uh, 3.3.3.0 network for example just to know and then we put here 0 0 0 slash 24 apply so this is the network name I go to router 1 inside filter output network this one and also I would like to advertise it to ISP3 um, even though that ISP3 has it already uh, in his network but I would like also to advertise it so if we go back now to router 1 we should see 3.3.3.3 let's have a look IP routes here we go so he can reach to that network from BGP so we still now have to do a router which is ISP3 ISP2 actually ISP2 sorry I was doing I was saying ISP3 so we have ISP1 and ISP2 and not ISP3 all right let's do that so we go to ISP2 so on ISP2 the autonomous system should be 3 and then ISP2 has to do a connection peer with 2R1 2R1 and this is the template and the rate mode autonomous system uh, it is 192.168.13.1 remote autonomous system 1 and it is eBGP so this is, should be now up and running yes and now I have to make from this router which is ISP2 to ISP1 so here I have to make the name to ISP1 we will use the default uh, template oops I clicked enter by mistake so default template um, the IP is 10.10.10.2 remote autonomous system 2 and it is ebgp okay so now we look also we have this session open so there is peer very good now uh, we need also to advertise the network 3.3.3.3 so i have to go to ip firewall address list and uh, we call it 3.3.3.0 network 0.0.0.0 slash 24 and all I need to do I go to here and I add it inside the output network to ISP1 and to router 1 so this way if we look to router 1 now router 1 if we go to IP routes you should see here we go he can reach to the uh, two networks uh, actually to the same network via two routes so we can go from router uh, ISP1 and from ISP2 but it has preferred ISP1 and I will tell you in a moment why he has preferred this one all right very good now the last thing that I want to do is to make beer between uh, router 1 and uh, the router which is called PC because actually this is not the PC this is a router also so I just want to make a peer uh, but this is going to be uh, IBGP because th this is inside the same autonomous system so let's go to router 1 we are on router 1 now I have to go to routing BGP and uh, I will actually you see I made a mistake here I was saying to ISP2 so this should be to ISP1 so we have ISP1 and ISP2 so this should be to ISP1 and this should be to ISP2 Sorry for this mistake, it's just uh, naming. Anyway, now we have to make uh, two PC. And uh, I'm gonna use also the same template. Remote autonomous system is 172.16.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
we have to go to actually um, let's have a look over here to extra and here we have to say uh, default originate and always so always insert a default route because I'm the gateway of that router anyway so he has to go via me so that's what I need to do now I go to that router so this is the last thing I want to do now uh, with the BGP peers I have to go again to BGP um, and so I have to go to routing BGP template I have to put it autonomous system one and then I make a connection and this connection should be to R1 template default R1 has 172.16.0.1 and it has remote autonomous system one and it is IBGP apply okay let's have a look it is formed already so now if I go to IP routes here we go it has received the um, uh, default BGP route excellent so that means now um, if I go to tools and I make a ping from this router to 3.3.3.3 I can reach it so all the way we are now using BGPs there is no any NAT there is nothing here so all the way I can reach to 3.3.3.3 but I'm wishing 3.3.3.3 from ISP uh, actually ISP2 I think let's have a look so we go to router 1 if we go to IP routes I'm reaching uh, 3.3.3.3 .3 .3 .3 from ISP2 but why not from ISP3 why the ISP3 is not uh, active so this route is not active and here we, we can think about the uh, attributes so let me just show you the attributes so the attributes works on sequence uh, check first the, uh, the weight uh, of course, I can't explain everything about them, them but it works like this. I check the weight, the high, uh, the local preference, the sure uh, um, autonomous system pass, and so forth until the end. So normally, all of those are the same on uh, the two routers. So this match, this match, match, match. So they are all the same. So what is changing here? If all those match is this one, which is the lowest uh, neighbor IP address. So if all of those match, it reach to the one which has the lowest uh, neighbor IP address. So the one which has the lowest neighbor IP address is the one which is gonna go be valid. And this is what we have here. If we look here, this one has lowest uh, neighbor. So this one has uh, uh, the neighbor is 192.168.12.2. The other one is 192.1.3.3. 1.2.2 is lower than 1.3.3, so then it takes this one to be the one which is going to be active. All right. So all the traffic now are going from ISP to now. Let's go back to the picture and let me explain to you what we need to do after the BGP is now running. So I want that if my uh, this router is want to go to 3.3.3.3. At this moment, it it's going from uh, the ISP one, right? it's going like this now what I want I want it that it goes from here from ISP2 it goes to reach 3.3.3.3 so this is one way I want it but I also want to influence the return traffic because in the return traffic um, um, the ISP1 will be able to send to uh, the PC traffic back or ISP2 and that's something we can look at it if we go to uh, the uh, Mike the Carter, we go to ISP1. So this is ISP1. So look, if I go to IP routes, uh, then it's saying to go to 172.16.0.0, I have to send to 192.1.2.1, which is router 1. So the router, the, uh, which is ISP1 saying, to go to that network, I have to send everything directly to router 1. Same does the second ISP. So if we go to the ISP2, Look, it says also to go to 172.16.00, I have to send everything to router 1. So that means if the traffic is coming, we say we want it to go from ISP2, then it can come back either from ISP1 or from ISP2. And I don't want that. I want that the traffic go from ISP2 and come back to me also from ISP2. So here we have to make two filter rules. And let me show you how we can do that. So we have to do this work on the router 1. First, I have to say that to reach to this network, 
I want all the traffic to go from that uh, route, which is ISP3. So now it is going from ISP2. I want it to go from ISP3. To do that, we have to go to routing BGP. And uh, actually, we have to go to routing filters. And from here, I have to create a rule. And here I have to say, uh, wait out. So I'm going to play with, uh, I would say wait. I'm going to play with the wait attributes, which is the attribute we have seen it over here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to increase the weight for the um, uh, ISP2. So when you increase the weight, it will check. ISP2 has a higher weight than ISP1, then it will go only from ISP2. All right, that's what I need to do. So here we have to write some codes, and that's what is on the BGP on Router S version 7 is totally different on Router S version 6. So we have to think it's like a programming language. And if you want, I can show you if we go to uh, Microtech, uh, um, let's go to Edge, and we go to the Microtech website. All right. Microtech, actually we have to go to help.microtech.com. So they give you some, um, some documentation that you can use for filtering. So we have to go to routing and uh, we go to, let's have a look. Um, so BGP. So this is uh, BGP. Actually, I want to look for the filter, this one. So here the, the, the filter, you can see you have, if the matcher, so if something you matching, then take an action or else take another action. So you have the matcher, the action and as the, so for example, here they give you an example. Um, if protocol is connected, then accept. If BGP mat, which is the metric is uh, less than 30, then accept. If, uh, so you see if something, then do something else. Now, what we need to do now, we have to play with the destination because that's what uh, what uh, we want uh, to do. So then we play with the destination and then we use the BGP weight. So that is the uh, uh, writable property that I'm gonna uh, use. So that's what we need to do. Now we start writing here the matcher. If the destination is equal to 3.3.3.0 slash 24 then the action now we have to open that one set bgp weight to 10 and then i will say here and accept the routes so that's what I need to do. And then I'll say here, apply. Let's see if it takes it. Very good. So it has taken it. Now, what I need to do, I have to go from router one. I have to go to routing, BGP, to the connection. And um, I want to increase it to ISP2 because the better the weight, then it's the one which is gonna be selected. But before I do that, let me show you. If we go now on this one, which is the active look the weight is nothing so they all have the same weight actually it is zero and if we go to the second one also the weight is zero now i will apply it on the isp2 so we can see the weight it goes to 10. let's do that so we go here and we go to the filter the way we have to apply it is in filter rule in wait and then apply look what's gonna happen you see directly this weight has increased to 10 and look to the routes now if we go to the routes Look, the route which is now active is the one which is on ISP2. Very good. So that's what I want. If we go back here, we see that the weight is 10. This one now has no weight, which is 0. So 10 higher than 0. So it's taking this way. So this is good now. But I want also the traffic when it comes back as well, that I want it to come from ISP2. So then I have to create also another one. But this time I'm going to use the attribute which is uh, um, this one, the IS path. So I have to increase the IS path to um, ISP1. So ISP1 will, will look, oh, I have to reach to 172.16.0.0. I have to go via many uh, autonomous system to reach to that uh, network. Then I have a better way I can go from router, uh, which is ISP2. 
because ISP2 has only one autonomous system to reach it. And if you want, I can just show you. Look, if we go to uh, the uh, ISP, uh, let's go to ISP2. ISP2 is saying that I have uh, only one autonomous system, which is autonomous system one. So only one to reach uh, to uh, uh, to that uh, network, which is 172.16, right? And the same thing, if we look to ISP1, same thing ISP1 also is, is having one autonomous system. So I'm going to increase this here to have, like, like for example, I make it prepend 11 autonomous systems, something like this. Then ISP1 will say, oh, I need to go 11 autonomous system, but I have a better way. I can go from the ISP2, which is this one. It has two autonomous systems, then uh, two is less. Then I will go from the, uh, um, the uh, ISP2. That's the idea. Where shall we do this work? Again, we have to go to router one. So that is router one. I will create again another one and I will call it uh, AS prepend. Same thing. Now I have to say, if the destination is equal equal to 172.16.00 slash 24. So that is the matcher. Now the action is set BGP. Actually, it is uh, if we look at it on the website of uh, Microtik, so we can uh, look which one is we are going to use. If they listed here, it should be listed somewhere here. Um, here we go. Uh, I think it should be this one. BGP path. Prepend. So prepend routers uh, autonomous system uh, should be used in the BGP output. Okay. So set. I'll make it here paste BGP path prepend, and then I will also increase it to ten, and then I will say accept all routes at the end. If you don't do that, accept, then the route will not be uh, added, and then I will say here close. Now, remember they said you have to apply it on the output. So where shall we apply it? On ISP1 or on ISP2? I want to increase uh, the autonomous system on ISP1. So we have to go to routing, BGP, ISP1. And now not on in filter, on output filter. And that's it. And apply. Look what's going to happen now. So on router 1, nothing will happen because uh, on the IP routes, you can see that uh, it's still using the ISP2. But if we go to ISP1 now, so if I open the router of ISP1, and I will go to IP routes, look now, it is going to 172.16.0.0 via 10.10.10.3, that means via ISP2. All right, this is the IP route. Why? Because to go directly to router one, you can see that look at the autonomous system path, how much it has been increased. So it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, exactly ten that I put. So between this one, which is ten, and this one, which is two, it will choose that one. So in this way, we have the traffic that we have uh, made it. It has to go to uh, the 3.3.3.0 network from ISP. Uh, two actually, and uh, also to come back from uh, ISP one. Now very good. That's uh, working perfectly. Now if I go to the PC and I try to do ping again, it is working. So what I want to do now, I have to stop the uh, um, the peer between the uh, BGP uh, router one and ISP two because this this is the way now all the traffic is flowing to see if it make a fail over and it go from the ISP one. So um, I will go to router one and I will stop the uh, BGP routing BGP between uh, the router one and ISP two. So this has been stopped. Let's have a look what's gonna happen now. Uh, we go to Again, to the PC, and look, the ping is still working. So there is a failover that happened automatically. And now if we go to router one, we can look on router one. Let's go to router one again. 
it has made now IP uh, routes. It is going from again uh, the ISP uh, one, and uh, the way it's coming back. So we can go to ISP one now and check. So this is ISP one. So it's coming back also from ISP one. All right, because uh, yeah, the link between the BGP peer between router one and ISP two went down. Excellent. Then we go to ISP2 and also we see that uh, the uh, ISP2 is reaching to that uh, network via router, uh, which is ISP1. Very good. So that's exactly what I wanted to show in this lab. So this is all what I wanted to show in this lab. I know it's a little bit difficult, uh, I understand, but uh, if you can watch it again, then you'll see is uh, what I did is a very nice uh, lab uh, to work with the BGP and also to work with the filters. So I hope that uh, this uh, lab was uh, nice for you. If you like my way of teaching, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and to put like on this video and share it to other people. Thank you very much and see you next time.